Hi, I'm Amy and this is A Star Reads. Today is going to be a discussion about Assassin's Quest. So Shell and I have been reading the Role of the Elderling series and we started with the Farseer trilogy. So this is the third book in the Farseer trilogy and it's going to be spoiler heavy because it's impossible to talk about this book without talking about spoilers and we've already read the first two books in the series and talked about those. So if you haven't seen those discussions, our very first one on Assassin's Apprentice has partial spoiler free. So go ahead and check it out. I'll link it in the description box below as well as up here. And then we also did a spoiler review of Royal Assassin. So I will also link that so you can check that out as well if you've already read the books and you just want to see what we thought about them, some of our guesses, some of the things we liked, didn't like. We had a lot of fun discussing these books. But I realized as I was editing this video that I never did an intro. So here's my intro. <laughs> and so I hope you enjoy this discussion and feel free to contribute to the conversation about Assassin's Quest and let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. So um, can you remember any of this? Um, since I read it several months ago, I can remember bits and pieces of it. Um, I also took some notes for the last hour before this video of what our predictions were from the last oh, one. Oh, good. Oh, good. You're more prepared than me. Things that I remembered that I wanted to talk about. But yeah, I, I did lose quite a bit of what happened in the book. Yeah. I finished this during our New Orleans trip and I, I can't remember much anymore. <laughs> And I was depending on you for this video. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you took notes. I took notes like an hour ago. That's so... perfect. That's more than I did. I was drinking Bloody Marys an hour ago. That sounds a lot, <laughs> a lot more fun. <laughs> We're just going to see how it goes, Shell. You had a lot of problems with this book. I remember you messaging me and being like, oh, I, I got I got things to talk about. I have issues with this. I don't think I have as many issues with it as you did. I think I gave it three stars. Yeah, that's the lowest one, I think, of the three. Really, I like the middle one the best. I like the middle one the best, too, because I gave Real Assassin five stars. And then this one, I'd probably give a 4.25. So I still liked them way more than you did. It was the least of the three, though. Actually, I probably still liked it better than the first one. It reminded me a lot of, like, the, the middle Lord of the Rings book. Not in the sense that it was like the Lord of the Rings book. You're traveling the whole time. You're trying to get to a destination. Yeah. And there was a lot of it. Like three quarters of the book was traveling in one direction or another. Yeah. Let's go back to some of our predictions. Okay. So, well, we both predicted that Fitz would follow Verity at the beginning of the book. We were half right. <laughs> That was our next step, is that Fitz was going to follow Verity, and I predicted that he would be necessary uh, in order to get the participation of the Elderlings. Yes, and I don't fully remember that, so I wasn't fully sure on that one. You mean I, your I knew he had to be there, but I can't remember. Yeah. You can't remember what Fitz had to do to be there? It's so No, I can't. Nice, yeah, nice. <laughs> Huge part of the bookshelf. It has, it has, <laughs> it has to do with the witch. It had something to do with the witch. It had to do with the witch. He was actually needed for it. So we yeah. were right about that. I think, yes. he, I think I made the prediction and I think you agreed with me. Yeah. Um, so, the skill was really was not necessary. It was the wit that was necessary. We were wrong about him following Verity, at least right away. It was kind of half right. He did follow Verity, yes. but it took him half the book to do it. <laughs> right. Okay. Other predictions we had. Well, I was wishing that. The, the two monarchs got together in the end and everything was okay. You mean and you like thought... Verity and... Mm -hmm. Verity and, and Ketrican would get together in the end and everything would be okay. It did, though, and in a sense, predicted... they got together in the end. For a little bit. For and you sense. predicted that Regal would be king and everybody else would die. <laughs> I wasn't that... That was kind of your prediction. That was the, that was the, uh, <laughs> you were Me. sure Verity would die. Ketrickin maybe or maybe not. And that Regal would be king and that and the duckies would all fall apart. That happened. Regal was king for a while. Verity did die in a way. And no, Ketrick he didn't die. He changed form. He didn't die. He's still technically alive as a stone. Probably. He's still not the same as he. He's as good. He's as good as dead. Yes. He's as good as dead. 
But I don't think the duckies fell apart. They, well, they feel kind of, they, kind of, they were bruised for dang, the, for, for dang sure. They you were, know. you know, the elder ladies came back and they did exactly what they did the last time. Right, right. So it doesn't yeah. really talk about the politics after what came of the duckies after. No, it, it was didn't. But, no, and I'm wondering if that we'll find that out more in the Connie Man trilogy. Maybe. Because that's when we revisit Fitz and, and the Fool. And the Fool! The Fool's in love with Fitz. Did we ever discover if he was a boy or a girl? So he's a boy, but... I thought. Okay. It was almost like Starling wanted him to be a girl because it suited her needs more. And because I would say, like, especially during that time, he's gender fluid. Yes. Gender fluid. So, but he's in love with Fitz. It's so cute. It was cute. Shade, I don't know what happened to him. Shade. Shade. I I went and read the last chapter just to try to. He flirts with young women. But it pretty much leaves you at he becomes Ketrickin's advisor. I forgot about that. Okay, yeah, yeah. Gosh, I feel like I read this a long time ago. Um, I read this a long time ago. <laughs> it was interesting to finally find out what, what the forging was all about and how forging actually worked and why forging was occurring. And it was really because of the elderlings. The elderlings, as they fly over you, cause you to go like numb emotionally, mind everything for mm-hmm. a second. And it ha- was happening so much when they were raiding the out, out islanders that the out islanders figured out how to harness that and yeah, something figured, to do with the stone right yeah yeah and i can't remember sorry guys this is what it's it has like it has something to do with the stone and that's what they were using to to forge right people in the six duckies um i went brain dead for a second. Yeah, so that was interesting. I didn't get as much satisfaction out of the Red Ship Raiders, though. Like, I wanted a little more from that storyline. You thought that there was more to it. Like, it, Regal had some kind of connection to them, and that yeah. Will had a connection to them, and it made it seem much more important in the first two books. Yes. And then the third book, it was kind of like, in like one chapter or so. <laughs> Happened. Yeah, and so that was a bit disappointing to me. I would have liked a little more of complexity to that storyline. It's not that that was the most interesting storyline of the the series, but she really kind of did imply things in the first couple of books. It made me think, oh, there's got to be more to this. And the mm-hmm. fact that there wasn't that much more to it was kind of like, oh, well, that, that kind of that, it was almost like a drop thread. Like you know, you drop that thread and just kind of let it go, and it was it was a little bit of a bummer to me. I think that was kind of one of my big problems with the book is that you had all this build up for certain things and then she spends half the book on him going after Regal, which he gives up, you know, half the rest of the book of him traveling to Verity and then everything resolves in the last quarter of the book. Yeah, which is okay in the middle of a series, but as the end of a trilogy, I'm not as crazy about that. You know what I mean? Because at that point, it, like the third books usually were, this should be the best book of the, of the trilogy, you know, when it, I, I think. But yeah. Royal Assassin was the most exciting book of the three. And that was the Yeah, second. the middle one was definitely the most exciting of the three. Yeah. I liked it. I really liked it. And I loved the ending. I really liked the ending. I loved all the uh, uh, the Elderling stuff. I loved this, you know, the descriptions of the dragons. I liked that whole area. That was very creative. I thought it was so cool. And... There were a lot of things that happened in the ending of the book that I really enjoyed, but then I didn't really need the the rest of the book, you know. What I wanted to text you so bad, and I needed to know what you thought, was what did you think about Molly and Burritch? Oh, I knew it was going to happen. I knew it was going to happen the second that Burritch, you know, went back and ended up helping Molly out. It was going to happen. I knew knew that whole time. I was just waiting for it to happen. What did you think? I hated it. You hated it. I thought it was, I hate it. I think it's a better match. I do think it's a better match. Don't get me wrong. I didn't like Molly with Fitz. We we covered that pretty much in the in the last one. I didn't like them together. So I did think they were a better fit. I didn't feel it was in character for Burridge. You just don't like Molly. 
it's not that. It's that here's this man who thought of Fitz as his son. Yeah. Who had this long love affair with Patience. Yes. And then all of a sudden falls in love with Molly. I mean, you get thrown together. That happens, though. It does, but I just kind of felt like, wouldn't you see her as your daughter? Like, you spent these whole books caring for Fitz like a son. You know that he loved her to death. Yes, you think he's dead, but isn't that slightly creepy? Slightly creepy. At a time when people marry their first cousins? What's creepy? It just felt creepy to me. I'm like, this is your, your son's daughter. This is at, a time, at a time when 60 year olds marry 13 year olds I, I don't know it doesn't make it right no it doesn't but I'm just saying it doesn't surprise me <laughs> it didn't it didn't surprise me it's I didn't feel like it was in character for his sense of honor yeah and his love of Fitz like it felt like an easy way to resolve the fact that Molly and Fitz will never be together Right. The author's easy resolve of that. I did think it was interesting that Molly was basically saying, yeah, I never really loved Fitz like that. Like, I did, but I didn't, you know? And I was like, yeah, we all knew that. <laughs> Fitz was the only one who didn't know that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Him him, him being so honorable towards her memory and not sleeping with girls because he felt like she was his wife. And, you know, especially after he had her kid. And I'm like, the whole time, like, both the people who supposedly loved him, you know. You're such an honorable person, Shell. Such an honorable, honorable person. And I'm not, really, but. <laughs> <laughs> but you want your characters to be. It's okay if you're not honorable, but they have to be honorable. And there was a part of me that didn't want to see him and Patience kind of end up together. Like, I would have. I would've, too. Yeah. It would have been nice to see that happen. He spent two whole books having issues with patients because they still loved each other and they had this whole history. And then it just, it, it just seemed so. It was wrapped up in a way that wasn't satisfying. And I felt out of character. <laughs> that was, that was a big issue for me. I finally got to loving Burridge in the second book. I had my issues with him in the first one. Mm -hmm. The second book, I absolutely loved him. The third book, it started out okay, and then he just kind of like, oh, look, what the hell are you thinking? It didn't bother me as much as it bothered you, because I definitely did not want Fitz and Molly together. So I was happy no. Burge taking Molly away from Fitz, because uh, they're just not a good couple. A lot of people I know that have read this series are like, oh, I love Fitz so much, and I don't get that. He is not a, a character that I would have a crush on or anything like that. He's just not like that to me. But I can see how people feel that way. And then and then I would then you'd think like, oh, I don't I don't think Molly's good enough for him. It's not even that. I just don't think personality wise and looking at their relationship that they had, it was so immature. It wasn't a healthy relationship. And so I just didn't think it was a good relationship at all. Which she got. Yeah. She and did. he ended up accepting. Painfully so but, though. Um so what do you think of him and Starling then? Sterling reminds me of you a lot. <laughs> I was like, that's chill. So, and like, so. like all the ways. I could totally picture you being Starling. If there was a movie that came out and we had to have a Starling character, Shell would be it. Like, <laughs> some reason, I don't know, some reason, every time I read about Starling, I'm like, oh, that's Shell. <laughs> that's Shell. I, I, did, I did not catch that. Really? Not you, don't, guess that. you don't think so? Thinking back to Starling, you can't see, like, personality-wise, the resemblances and stuff like that? Oh, I totally saw it. Yeah, you're Starling. I don't mind. She wasn't a bad character. No, I liked her. I don't know about her. I didn't, I, no. I really no. would like Fitz to go back and marry that, what was the name of that princess? Or Polarity. Princess? Celerity. Celerity. I loved Celerity. I want, and Celerity to me seems like a great match for Fitz. She would challenge him. She'd be a great ruler with him or whatever they did. Like she was adventurous. I don't know. She was awesome. She was badass. And I felt like she matched Fitz way better than any of the other women that he crushed on her. Did she survive? Yes. Did she? Yeah, yeah, she survived. I know her father died and her sister died, right? I didn't know. If or did her sister survive? I thought Clarity survived. If you guys know, put in the comment section down below. 
because I can't remember. Did Celerity survive? We cannot remember. Is she still alive? Is there still hope that Fitz and Celerity will get together? Because that is uh, my wish. Is that your wish, Shell? Sure. She's definitely the best out of all the options. Wait, I like Starling a lot, but they're not, you know, it's not love between them. It's comfort. Shell, since you're Starling, who do you want to end up with? I don't think Starling's going to be that involved in the future. No, I mean, I'm she's asking, still I'm around. Asking, I'm asking you as, as, a, as a, who's your favorite, who's your dude character? My favorite character now is Night Eyes. Night Eyes is my favorite character. <laughs> can't end up with him. <laughs> That's not awkward at all. <laughs> well, you know who my favorite character is? Who now? The Fool. Never mind. That was dumb. That was, wow, Shell. Good job there. Yeah, I love The Fool. I, I don't love think Starling the and The Fool are going to end up together. There's a lot of uh, animosity between us two. Yeah, there's a bit of there's a bit of sexual tension there between you guys. I can see that. <laughs> no. I think Fitz and The Fool are going to end up together. No. I know. I don't so, think so. I, I wouldn't mind. Fitz. The ferret that was charged with killing Regal in the in that's not is that Shade's ferret? I couldn't I no. understand that. No. When he meets the people of the old blood and and he stays with them for a little bit and then promises to go back and he does end up going back. We don't hear about it as much, but he does end up going back and training with them because they know so much more about Wit and the pair bond. That was one of them. The ferret's pair bond died. Yes was killed by Regal or whatever. And, and so that was the ferret's last task was to try and kill. It was so cute. And he it comes so back cute. in the end. He's haunting Regal in the end. I didn't remember that. I know that he he killed somebody, right? It wasn't Regal, but he killed somebody. I think so. But in the end, like it hints that Regal is frightened all the time. He goes around the castle and he's scared all the time because there's like a rat chasing him around the castle or something. And it's, it's not the rat. It's that ferret that's still trying to finish his mission, but he's basically uh, haunting Regal at, at the end. I don't think he ever ends up killing Regal. Regal never dies, does he? Regal doesn't die, but he's not Regal anymore. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? So you were kind of right. He's still in the picture, but it's okay because he's not really him anymore. Because he's been brainwashed just the way that Will and all of them were brainwashed. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't like having Regal around. I don't trust him. It's like having Umbridge around. Yeah. I didn't mind that so much because it's not him anymore. And he's going to support Ketrickin now. So really, Ketrickin and uh, her son, Prince Dutiful, will now Who's take over. actually Fitz's son. See, that's, that's what I was like. That was driving me crazy. I was like, isn't, I mean, they switched minds, but isn't it technically biologically fits Oh, yeah. <laughs> because at one point, Starling says at the end that he looks like Verity. Or he, sa he says something where it's, you know, just like his father. And I'm like, okay, but Which you father? do realize <laughs> that it was Fitz's body, right? So... <laughs> Yeah, and I loved how, like, after Verity had left Fitz's body, and then Fitz is, like, so, like, ugh, freaked out and embarrassed and stuff, and then Kendra can see Fitz, and she's like, hey. <laughs> and Fitz is like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. It was weird. It was, it That's was taking one for the team. Ketrick and Boris' son, Prince Dutiful. Starling told me he has his father's coloring, but looks as if he will be a tall, slender man like Ketrickin's brother, Rurisk. I'm like, he has his father's coloring. Meaning Fitz's. <laughs> <laughs> you are oh, staying with Ketrickin me. to be her... I don't know. I know that she comes and visits Fitz every, you know, two or three times a year. She brings him a boy. <laughs> I thought that was weird too. I didn't understand any of that. Well, she brought him a companion that needed to be looked after. No, I got that, but it just was kind of strange. Like she just randomly found this kid who needed a home, and she's like, "Oh yeah, this will be Fitz's buddy." Like I don't know, it just seems so strange. It's certainly not yeah. the ending I would have wanted for Fitz. Well, he didn't have an ending. He had a just where he always was, alone and in pain and it wasn't a great ending for him i mean it was a 
good ending for everybody else, I guess. What did you think of Verity through all this? I thought it was sad. It wasn't Verity anymore by the time we catch up to him. He was he was pretty much gone. And with those hands that those like Yeah. It was he was gone by the time they got there. Yeah, I thought that was really sad too, actually. I thought Verity's situation was really sad. Even more sad than Fitz. I don't know why. His life was taken away from him so quickly, you know, Fitz's life's been slowly taken away from him over a long period of time. But Verity's just kind of like degraded so fast. He kind of, like mm-hmm. Fitz, never wanted this life. It's like he sacrificed himself just to kind of get away from it as well. His life wasn't happy. You know, as much as he loved Ketrikan, still he couldn't be the the king or the person she wanted him to be. Or I don't know. He was a very tragic character to me. Fitz is too, but we're still following Fitz. So he's not, he's not done being tragic yet. It's a very positive way to look at it. We got more tragedies to come with Fitz. She just ended the book really fast. Like a lot of it was just explained in that last chapter. I don't know, the little epilogue type chapter of this is what happened to these people and these people and these people. And Yeah. Oh, what did you think of, we never talked about, um, what's the name of the, the lady that was part of a, part of a coterie? That. The lady killed, died. She killed her sister. No, she killed the man her and her sister were fighting over. No, she killed her sister. Oh, 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 the lady who helps uh, Verity make the dragon. Yes, what was her name? She sacrifices her life, right, to help yeah. make the dragon. So is she technically um, in the dragon too then? Yeah, I think so. Well, we didn't see her for very long, but she was a cool character. I liked her a lot. I liked Kettle. Yeah. She was one of my favorite characters in this book, actually. Very no-nonsense. Mm-hmm. And very knowledgeable, too, so I actually learned a lot from her. It was interesting to meet someone who had the skill who really understood what the skill was all about. I thought that was fascinating because it feels like they were, like, blindly stumbling in the dark most of the time, you know. I thought what happened to the coterie and everything, it was a little unsatisfying because it just happened so quickly, you know. These characters were so powerful and then all of a sudden they, they died off pretty easily. Although that scene where they're killing all those like many, many minions of Code Remembers by awakening all the dragons, that was pretty freaking awesome. I loved that scene. It was hilarious. Him and Night Eyes were like, quick, go, go, go. It was awesome. Really, Night Eyes is the whole reason to read the series. I thought she did a clever job of that, of figure out how to make Night Eyes seem more animal, more wolf. Mm-hmm. And yet you could also see how he was slowly becoming more human because he was sharing mind with Fitz so much. I like that perspective. I'll be curious to see more of that in the future books, like how their relationship has evolved. How long do wolves live for? 12 to 15 years. Yeah. Yeah, he's not going to live forever. But I... I don't know if they talked about whether bonding increases the lives of the animals that are bonded, because I would think that it would. But it kind of made it sound like he was getting to be an older wolf at the end, whereas Fitz is still might feel like an old man, but is still a young man. He is. He's Um, still young. Probably the reason I rated it lower was the whole part where Night Eyes wasn't in it, like where he goes off to to be in his (laughs) pack and whatnot. And I'm like... I just have Fitz. <laughs> this is a story about Night Eyes, Shell. This is a story about Fitz. Well, Night Eyes is like half of him. That's true. That's true. He is. And he's the one with the the comedy and the and the just, <laughs> just cute. Here's the thing. You're like a combination of Night Eyes and Starling. I see you in those two. You know, you've got Night Eyes sense of humor and Starling sense of humor as well. But you've also you're you're very much Starling and Night Eyes combined. That's that's who you are. I feel like I need to read this book again just so I know what you're saying. <laughs> I really liked how Ketrikin was starting to expand her wit sense. And mm-hmm. she, she was totally in denial about it. She wouldn't admit to it. But it was there. And Night Eyes kept saying, oh, yeah, she knows she knows what I'm saying. She, she hears me. She's getting it. And yet she just kept acting like it was a, another sense. Predictions! I feel that that he's fathered two kids will come into it at some point. If he's got two of them, there's a good chance that somehow they either come looking for him or... Who's going to be the bad guy this time? Probably still the the Outlander. Outlanders? Because this time it was Regal. 
I mean, the Allen Islanders were a problem, but Regal was. There's nobody else to be a bad guy, though. Ketrickin and Regal are in charge. Like, yeah. what else can you do? And then she's got her son, Dutiful. What's going to happen with Dutiful? What's he going to turn into? Well, he's part Fitz and part Ketrickin. I have great hope that he'll be a great king. He's related to Fitz, so will he have the wit and the skill then as well? Of course! He's got to have the wit and the skill. Which might come into play more. The wit might actually come into play more because it's still considered a really bad thing. I mean, maybe among the people who know Fitz, it's not considered as bad of a thing for them because they've gotten used to the fact that he has it. But in general, the general population still thinks the wit's like one of the worst things you could possibly have. And because of the Willful Princess and the Piebald Prince, we know that there are records out there somewhere that explains that the wit is not as bad as everybody thinks it is. So right. that has to come into play at some point. Right. Yeah, agreed. Mm-hmm. And the wit is what causes the elderlings to come to life. I mean, mm-hmm. you can get them to come to life with the skill as Verity did, but you have to give your life for that. So that's going to come back into play, too, don't you think? Yeah. What I think was what I thought was really interesting about the dragons is that they're sort of insatiable, you know, and they only are out doing what they need to do until the job is done, and then they go back and turn into stone because there's no way to maintain them in a sense. Because mm-hmm. yeah. they just want to keep eating. Yeah, the dragons aren't as cool as I would have liked. I was that was a bummer because <laughs> the dragons can't just stick around. Like but then they have a whole trilogy on the dragons, right? Yeah, so uh, that's got to come back into play as well. I guess we'll probably see. Well, obviously we will see, but... Maybe. Maybe she doesn't care what we go about our questions. She's like, I don't care if you have questions. Whatever. I'll do what yeah, I she want. Lives in your state, right? Yeah, she lives in Tacoma, which is like two hours away from here. Yeah, Rob and Hobbin are like best friends. <laughs> we have coffee all the time. Or we will when she realizes that we live so close to each other. She's going to be like, oh, Amy, hey, let's go hang out. <laughs> That's, that's exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> I, I, I predict that. <laughs> that's your prediction? Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so three stars. Definitely not your favorite. How are you feeling about the series overall, Shell? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. If she's a great writer. I'll give her that. I do tend to like books that are a little bit more happy and not as descriptive as she does. But now I'm invested. Like, I've read three of them. I kind of have to keep reading. I like her characters. I just don't like how, you know, I just wish it was a little bit more happy. Yeah, it's not going to be. Yeah, this isn't. (laughs) Robin Hobb writes. Um, I I was curious, like, if you compare this to the Eye of the World, because you've you've read all all of that, no, most of it. You read all of no, it. No, all of it. Yeah. Compared comparing to that, it's got the whole fantasy world element to it, and I mean, it's a big fantasy series. Yeah. So it's got that, but Robert Jordan's books it follows multiple point of views. So you're going back and forth between, and then sometimes point of views that you're like, was that even necessary? Like, who is this person? Like, whereas Robin Hobb, it's all fits. You'll get that in Ship of Magic. Mm. I'm not as fond of the multiple point of views. Then you might not like Ship of Magic. (laughs) Like, don't get me wrong. Like a romance novel, I feel like needs to have two point of views. I'm not as fond of romance novels where it's just the female's perspective and stuff because I feel like like I don't understand men enough like why you have to leave me the whole time not understanding what's going on too I'd really rather know what you're both thinking else I just totally <laughs> lose half of them. So that's being written by a woman who probably doesn't know what men think either <laughs> Possibly With Robert Jordan's series you have three main characters pretty much three main guys and then you have three main girls or four, I don't even know you have a lot of main girls too Mm-hmm. But with the switching back and forth between the, the perspectives and what's going on, there were some books, like, you didn't hear about one of the main characters the entire book. Oh, okay. <laughs> and if that was your favorite character, then that book was kind of like, all right, well. Not your favorite book, then. Not my favorite book. Yeah. However, with the way he did it, I do feel you cared about those characters more than you do in Robin Hobb's book. 
Okay. Because a lot of people are infatuated and love, absolutely love Fitz. as one of their favorite characters of all time. I don't feel that way myself. I, I don't like him near as much as I loved Perrin from the, the Wheel of Time series. I loved Perrin. He wasn't the main, main character, but he was one of them. And in the books that he wasn't in, I was not nearly. He was by far my favorite of the characters. Um, and I had a strong emotional attachment to him. I don't have that for Fitz. I don't have that for anybody in the series. I find some of them fascinating. I think it's well written, but there's something about it that's kind of drawn back perspective of what's going I, I agree. on. Yeah. I don't feel as deeply involved in it. And the, I, the and I liked the second one best because I felt you did get more connected to them in that book. And then it mm -hmm. kind of went back to the way it was. We're able to get in their mind, but not necessarily in a way that puts them in a good light. You're not seeing the best sides of Fitz ever. Like, rarely do we see the best sides of Fitz because he's always being pushed to his limits and stuff. And he's, I guess it's kind of nice that he's a flawed character because it's more realistic. But at the same time, it makes it harder to create a strong connection to him, I think. And then I like the fool. I think he's an interesting character. But, I mean, because you don't get his point of views, it's, again, hard to kind of develop. And I think that's probably why I like Night Eyes best. Because you get you get to be in his mind. I yeah. feel connected to Night Eyes. <laughs> Even Verity. I did love Verity, but he was kinda already gone at that point. So his death scene wasn't as I know he's not dead. He's in he's in a he's in a dragon. But for our purposes as 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 a man he has died, you know, his yes. he's lost his human life. He was already kinda gone at that point. So and what I think really makes those scenes emotional is when it touches the characters around it. Yeah. It's not something yeah. when something happens. It's when you feel or you see the grief of other characters that really, I think, help you feel it as well. And you didn't get that that much in that one. The second one, you did. Yeah. And the third one, you did not. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree with that. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it goes forward. And, and I would love to see, it's the Tawny Man trilogy, so it's, basically about the fool fool's errand fool's fate fool's i'm hoping we get the fool's perspective i think that would be more fascinating i think he is probably still other than other than my wolf uh he's probably the most fascinating character <laughs> i'm excited to read more from robin hobb considering that these were her first so to see kind of how she advances as, as an author too because mm -hmm. you know most authors the more they write the more their perspective changes, their writing changes, they get more confident in themselves, different things, you know, like different things happen. So I'd be curious to see even how these characters change in like what will, what will have been her third trilogy that she's written. So I'm curious. I am loving so far the Life Ship Traders. I don't know if you're going to like it. As, as <laughs> well, we will see. Should be interesting. Yeah, we'll find out. So thank you so much, Shell, for joining me to talk about Assassin's Quest. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe so that you can see more of our, our discussions because we're going to be talking about the Live Ship Trader trilogy next. So I don't know when, but hopefully eventually we'll get to talk about these. And that's it. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you later. Bye.